HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. So we wanted to make sure that we touched over on all things that we were going to be doing in the women's call and the focus for the women in the women's call, whether whether we're dealing with women or whether men are dealing with men. This is the standard of Yache that we're all supposed to be walking in and we're all supposed to be abiding in for our faith. Um, we're going to be going in Philippians chapter two, if anyone wants to follow along. Um, Kasa, I'm gonna break it down. You're gonna have to go slow with me. I'm with you. All right. Uh, Philippians chapter two, verse one, please. Philippians chapter two, verse one. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, All right? So consolation means like someone begging you to do something. So if there's gonna be anything that we're going to beg you to do. This is what we're going to beg you to do. All right, go ahead, Brother Kasa. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Right. So we're talking about comfort, fellowship bowels and mercies joy and we're all supposed to be like-minded in those things all right again comfort of love so it's supposed to be loving and comforting one another fellowship of the spirit so we're all supposed to be striving to bring forth fruits of the spirit and walking in that towards one another if any bowels and mercies, so we're supposed to be forgiving. If somebody does something, you're forgiving. If somebody's going through something, you have the bowels. You have that, that empathy and that compassion toward them. Fulfill ye my joy. So if we do those things, we're going to fulfill the joy of Yache. That ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So if we all are abiding by the law, if we're all abiding by the commandments, we're all going to be of one mind. Now, when we get away from the commandments and we go into our own feelings or whatever the case is, then that's when we're not of the same mind anymore. So we have to stay in the law and put our personal feelings aside until our personal feelings align with Elohim. And that's a process. Go ahead, Brother Kasi. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. All right. So let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Uh, strife is um, like faction. So that means that you you're cool with one person you're not cool with another or if someone does something like you're it's it's um what is it called it's um you know when when it's not the same on both sides partiality mm, it's not the exact word i'm looking for um you know like like one person can do something and another can't double standard yeah, yes, there is a double right. standard. Yes. So it's a double standard. So you're like, okay, this person can get away with this and this person can't. And it creates that division. It's not that love. So it has to be the same for everyone. The law has to be the same for everyone. And when the law is the same for everyone, everyone is accountable. And that makes the love impartial. And we can't be doing things for vainglory. We have to come in here and be honest and sincere and truth. 
so that we don't get lifted up or try to esteem ourselves over one another. But instead, as we're going to go on, here we go. Keep on going, Casa. Hold on. Uh, yep, go ahead. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Right. So we have to come into this with the mindset that other people are better than us. We have to come into the mindset of, man, all right, let me, I see this brother, he's striving. I have to strive the same. I can't get into the mindset of looking at, oh, this brother's falling. Oh, this sister's falling. And to get into the vain glory that I'm doing better than them. So I'm doing well. When we're all supposed to have our eyes on Yache going forward, if I'm looking to the side of me or I'm looking behind me, my eyes is all for what I'm supposed to be looking at. So then it's easy for me to get caught up in vain glory because I'm looking at everyone else instead of comparing myself to the law and the testimony and to Yache and to the fruits of the spirit. And I get caught up, I get blinded. So we have to focus on not getting blinded to seeing other people where it takes our eyes off of ourselves and Yache. Kasa, if you got anything, you can say something. Well, the spirit of fornication helps with that. Because fornication in the Testament of Judah 17, fornication also teaches arrogance. So what will happen is when a fault is committed or when one is struggling, fornication seeks to keep us in that struggle by lifting us up to be arrogant, to look down on others. Hence, we'll be looking, well, I'm not as bad as such and such. Uh, we'll see somebody else struggling and we'll be hard on them in our thought or judgmental of them to where that spirit is working to keep us thinking we're in a better place than we actually are or to get us off of that focus of looking toward our higher right. so, and looking at yourself. Yeah. Right. Cause that's all the enemy wants. He just wants you to look away. That's why Yache said no man putting his hand to the plow and looking backwards is worthy because if you're putting your hand to the plow and you're focused on your own work, you're not going to be focused on anyone else. But if I'm focused on everyone else, I'm not working. So we have to be mindful that we're working and that our brother is working and that our sister is working. And if they need help, Allah is going to give it to them. But hey, let me focus on what I need to focus on so I can get what's for me so that I can walk forward and be prospered. You might continue on Brother Kassel. Um, Before we go, you started off with explaining what it is to be of one mind. And the scriptures mm -hmm. confirm that sentiment of everybody being focused on themselves. Because in um, the Acts of Peter, when they were with Paul and that one lady had sinned, all the believers, nobody said like, yeah, look at her. Look what she did. They all said, is Allah going to forgive us for our sins? There was that actual comfort of love, that bowels and mercy of compassion to know what we're talking about. We're on the right track with building the right environment for us to grow. Amen. So, continuing in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Right. So... Look how you can help somebody else. If you see something that will help someone else, do it or let them know like, hey, this will actually help you. I see that you're doing this. This will help you. This helped me. So I know it'll help you. We're supposed to be helping one another and working and feeding off of one another. That's why it says iron sharpen if iron. Like if we stay away from the vain glory, then we will actually operate in that humility to say, look, man, I got something that'll help you. Or like if I see somebody 
that's it's hurting. Say the arm is hurting. I'm gonna be like, oh, your arm hurting? Hey, I know something that that's good for that. Like that's exactly what it's talking about. Look not every man on its own things, but every man also on the things of others. It said also on the things of other others. So we're supposed to be focused on ourselves. And if I see that I can help, of course, also I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I do that as well. So I'm not focused on their faults. I'm not focused on their walk. I just seen a place where I could help. And I jumped in and did my work and got back to my work. Right? You got anything on that, Casa? I was going to ask you to touch on that goes right in with bearing ye one another's burden. Burdens. Like, if you see me, say I'm, I get in a fit of emotion. If you're looking on the things of others, what would you do to help me? Though it may not be something you say to me, hey, I can help you. How would you react to that to help me, for example? No, well, my example, I tell you to breathe. I'm a brother. You need to breathe. <laughs> you know, so just as simple as that is enough to help your brother or your sister. Like, hey, I see you getting into your emotion, you know, stop, you know, breathe so you can gather yourself. You know, even if it's words of encouragement or words like, hey, be mindful of the law, you know, you can say something just that simple. And they're going to start thinking about whatever it is that you're talking about, even if they don't understand. It's going to slow them down. Yeah. You remember you Judah know? was angry? I mean, <laughs> so all he did yeah, was he just touch the shoulder. shoulder. Right. So, it, so you don't even have to speak. It's just a right. sentiment. Right. A lower. You taught me about how well, I showed you, like, lowering your tone. Yeah. Help the person see. Going to more humility. That actually is one of the things that actually helps. Like, this may be your normal tone, but going into more humility, like it changes it. It changes the dynamic. You know, you may have to get very, very low and, and just, hey, you know, I'm here for you. Like you, you may have to change those tones from your regular speaking. Just depends on what's going on, but it's to help your brother or your sister. The main focus here is that that in that humility, we're supposed to be helping one another, not looking and trying to find faults or to find faults to lift ourselves up above them. Whatever the case is, we're not supposed to be looking for the faults of people. We're supposed to be helping them in their walk at the same time, focused on our own walk. And that is the purpose of why we're here. Everyone's here to learn, to grow. We have to be humble. We have to help one another and see each other, not be greater than one another, but see each other as equals or greater than ourselves so that we're able to move forward together. And we're supposed to be one body in Yache. If we're exalting ourselves up against one another, how can we walk together? At least we be agreed. We have to be in the same mind to be able to walk together. And that mind is love. It's peace, joy. It's, it's Yache. All these elements that creates and constructs Yache are the elements that are supposed to be creating and constructing us in our everyday walks. So we have to be built up a spiritual house just as Alahayim is a spiritual house. We have to examine ourselves so that we can actually put on the yoke of Yache. We can actually put on these good spirits, seeing the wrong in the, in the ones that we don't want and ridding them out and pushing them out and putting forth the work and the effort of getting those out of us so that we can actually put on the spirits that are the ones we actually want. 
but it's a process and it takes time. And we have to be humble in that process, focusing on ourselves so that we can get there. Because if we're focused on everyone else and everything else that's going on, we're not focused on working. We're at a halt. We're at a standstill. We're stuck in a season. Or we're going to get stuck in the season if we don't continue moving forward, putting our hand to the plow and not looking backwards. Can we get a uh, Philippians 2 and 5, Brother Cuffin, please? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Yache, who being in the form of Allah Hayim, thought it not robbery to be equal with Allah Hayim, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Right. So... Even Yache thought it not robbery to be equal with Alahayim because he is an Alahayim. He's part of the Alahayim head. But yet, even in the spirits that he was walking in, made himself of no reputation. He came and he was the lowliest of all of us. So if we're walking in the spirit of Yache, how can we walk in vainglory? How can we exalt ourselves in pride if we're supposed to be as Yache in the same mind as Yache? When Yache came to the earth, he was of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. He came to serve. He came to help. That's what servants do. They help. They help wherever they're needed. Okay, we continue, Brother Cosmo. Oh. This is verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Mm. So here we go. Yeah, say he humbled himself, one, because he's an Alahayim. He humbled himself to be the lowliest man upon the earth. Coming from a great high to a low, low. And he did it with joy. How many of us, if somebody asks us to do something, we moaning and groaning. You know, but he came from where he came from all the way down to be lowly. And he came and he did it with joy and he bared our burdens. And became obedient. Obedient to what? Right? He was obedient to his father. He was obedient to the law. He was obedient to the fruits of the spirit. And he walked in those things every day. So looking at our example, we have to walk in those things every day, being obedient, because that's what obedience is. If we're not continuing, if we're not continuing to do it always, then it's not obedience. Obedience, attentively listening, that is submissive. So we have to submit ourselves to the law and the fruits of the spirit and to Yache and to Ahaya and the Holy Spirit. We have to submit ourselves and be obedient unto death, actually. That means that we have to continually do it until the end. That's why I was saying, if we don't continually be obedient, then it's not obedience. We can't pick and choose when we're going to be obedient and when we're not, because that's not obedience. 
That's lukewarm. That's double-minded. So anything other than being obedient and being obedient unto death puts us lukewarm or double-minded. There's no gray area in this walk. It's black or white. It's hot or cold. We have to choose whether we're going to be hot or whether we're going to be cold. Because if we're hot, we're going to get spewed out. If we're hot, we're going to get spewed out. So this is the mind that we have to put on us when dealing with one another, especially. It's to be obedient unto Allah because our obedience unto Allah is what allows us to be obedient and, and loving and doing the things that are needful for one another. If we don't hold on to that obedience to Allah then who are we being obedient to? If we're going to be lukewarm and we're going to be 50% with Allah and doing good things and 50% with the enemy doing bad things, what does it profit us? So he was obedient unto death. On what you, Brother Kass, if you mind, we had two and nine. Wherefore, Allah also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So because he came from the heights and he came from his great glory down to the earth to be very lowly as a servant and to be humble, and he did it with joy, Allah exalted him. He got a reward for his good works and he was obedient unto death. Allah highly exalted him. He didn't seek the praise he, of me. Right. You see wow. where I was going. <laughs> yeah, I know you're jumping the gun on me over there. <laughs> he didn't exalt himself. So because he didn't exalt himself, Allah exalted him. Because Allah is just like how we're supposed to be. He's helping his brother where he sees, or sister where he sees it's, it's beneficial. And he's helping us. He, he may see that we are struggling at one moment. He might give us just what we need just at that moment to help us. He's operating how we ought to operate. So this is the mind that we have to have in us for one one to another so that we can be one in the body of Yache. We can be brothers and sisters, true brothers and sisters in Yache, having that law to keep everyone at a standard of operation so that we can all walk in love toward one another. Let's keep it going, Brother Kasi, if you don't mind. Sure. Wherefore he hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yache every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So by us doing this and strengthening ourselves to be as Yache, we're bowing to him. We're humbling ourselves to Yache. And that's the goal, that we humble ourselves to Yache and that we serve him. No longer serving ourselves, but serving Yache only and being obedient unto death. Keep going, Brother Kassel, please. And that every tongue should confess that Yache Christ is Lord to the glory of Allah, I am the Father. Right. So we have to confess it. 
And that's what's going to save us. That's what's going to bring us unto the start of our repentance is confessing, confessing Yahweh's name. Because his name starts the process. Once we believe on the name, it starts the process of our of our purging, of our baptism of fire. Once that process gets going, once we invoke his name and we truly believe on his name, now that's when the purging starts. That's when we start going through our journey and start truly experiencing things and seeing things and 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 battling things and whatever the case is, whatever may come our way to strengthen us, to get us to the point where we can serve Allah and be obedient unto death. It's a work. It's a work. We all have to stay focused on our own plowing. And if we have time and we see the, and the opportunity to help someone else, help them. Then get back to your own plowing. Like we have to focus on ourselves and mind our own business. <laughs> mind our own business so that we can move forward. And when it comes, Allah is going to send the help to the people that he needs to send help to because he's Allah Haim. He's going to send what needs to be sent to the prophet or whatever the case is, or the teacher or whatever the case is to give the people what they need. We can't be looking and being busybodies and other men's matters, trying to do something when we have enough work on our own plate. Let's keep it going, brother. Casa. you got anything? Oh, that was good. Chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All right. Now, this part right here gets so overlooked. And I praise Allah Hayyam, and I hope that he really helps us all today in growing in our walks. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, right? So it's not only when those people that we esteem as righteous or as a as an elder or whatever the case is, is around. Not only that, but now much more in my absence. So we have to be the same person, whether people are around us or whether we're by ourselves. I talk to my children and I tell them, hey, what determines your true character is the person that you are when you're by yourself. And that's the same for us. We're no different. That's how we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's being the same person that we're supposed to be always. Because other than that, we're double-minded. We're, we're actually deceived. And we're actually walking in guile. If we are one way in front of people and another way when we're by ourselves. And you can't sustain it. You can't sustain it. You will find yourself always having to go be alone to recharge. Because you can't sustain something that's not natural. It's not natural. So for us in this walk and for us as brothers and sisters in Yache Christ, we have to be the same when we're around people and the same when we're by ourselves. We have to be a true walker of Yache a true servant of Yache, obedient unto death, not giving in to our follies when we're alone, but withstanding from our follies always, withstanding from the forces that come against us or the temptations always. 
and that will strengthen us. When you when I'll let y'all in. Um, when you see someone that is not really growing, like they're of the faith, they're striving of the faith, but they're not really growing, like well like it's 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 very their their growth is very very slow it's because they're not the same when they're alone as when they're amongst everyone and it's daunting their growth so for us we have to be the same always and that's what's going to allow us to put our hand to the plow if we're focused on our work eventually your work's going to be getting done. You're going to be building that house. That house is going to be getting built. But if I'm sluggish in my works and I'm building half of the time, it's going to take me double the time of another person that's working 100%. So we have to focus on putting our hand to the plow and being obedient unto death. That I'm gonna keep saying that just so it sticks in everyone's everyone's mind. That obedient unto death, because there's no other way. We can't be 80 and 20%, 90 and 10. We have to be obedient and do it always. That's the only way that it is obedient. And then we were commanded to be obedient. So we're gonna y'all gonna hear that a couple more times. I love you, but you gotta hear it. Um Let's keep going, Brother Cos. You got anything on that? I thought that was good. David uh, set a good example when he had said in Psalms 101 and 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. So he was for sure to do well, even when by himself. Amen. Continuing in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is Allah which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Right. So when we're striving for that obedience and we're striving for to put on the yoke of Yache and to take off the, the yokes that we've accumulated through our works and through our desires that we picked up in the world, it's actually Allah working in us. After we invoke that name, Allah starts working in us. So when you really understand it, the vain glory, it really doesn't make sense because it's not you doing anything. It's actually Allah working in you and, and guiding you and pushing you and, and showing things to you. And you're just along for the ride. Like to get lifted up in yourself when you're not doing anything, you can see why it's called vain glory because you really don't understand. And we have to get past that so that we can really understand. And that's where the humility comes in by understanding. We have to understand so that we can humble ourselves and grow. Because a fool lifts himself up in pride because he lacks understanding. Knowledge puffs up because you can know a lot and not understand it. And the more you know, the more it gives place for the pride. And it gives place for the vainglory. Because the more you know, the less you know. The more you know and don't understand, the less you know. Because now it's just a whole bunch of things accumulated with no focus. For us, we're going to continue to be admonished. Uh, let's let's go, Brother Casa. Verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, 
Right. So do all things without murmurings. Murmurings means like the grumble or to drag your feet. So you're not doing it in joy. Right? We have to do all things in joy. Even the things that we don't want to do, we have to change our perspective and see that it's for our good and see that it's helping us. Because you have to remember, Allah Hayim is working in us. So if Allah Hayim is pushing us to do something, why are we dragging our feet and not being joyful to do it, being a servant? Are we obedient? Even unto death. Or are we disobedient and only want to do the things that are easy for us and the things that are convenient? Do we know better than Allah what's needed for us to come out of our follies that we found ourselves in? Or are we going to trust Allah to get us out of the things that we couldn't get ourselves out of? Because if Allah left it to us, we would never have came out of our iniquity. That's the reason we went into it in the first place. It's because we enjoyed it. So it's only Allah that's pulling us out of our iniquities and opening our eyes to it to see a better way in him. We have to be mindful of what's going on around us and spiritually so that we're able to walk spiritually. And we also have to do it without disputings. Disputing is, is like a discussion of talking back. When we don't do it right away, we're disputing. Dissembling our heart. We don't have to say anything to dispute. You can just not do it. Or drag your feet, which is part of disputing. Because you don't want to do it, yet you're going to do it, but yet you have a problem with it. And being doubtful is actually part of disputing. Or reasoning within yourself. Gets interesting. <laughs> Do all things without murmurings and disputings. So if Allah Hayim has told us to do something or, or Allah Hayim is leading us to go do something, Or if Allah Hayim is telling us to keep his law in a scenario. And we reason in ourselves of whether we should do it or not. Or whether we should commit that sin or not. And we're sitting there reasoning. Well, the law says this, but um, man, like. We're disputing. Definition. Being doubtful, right? Go ahead, brother. I was saying them definitions explain it. This pretty it covers it all. What you got? Give me some scriptures to go with it, man, because you know I'm coming off the head with this one. This is literally in the definition of the word disputing. It says discussion, that is internal consideration by implication, purpose, or external debate. Dispute, doubtful, doubtful, doubting. That would be imagination, reasoning, thought. The thinking of a man deliberating within himself. Inward reasoning. Questioning about what is true. Hesitation. Doubting. Arguing. Disputing. So 
you know what the interesting part it was? It said imagination. So even having a wicked imagination about somebody, something that may have not happened, but you thought about it in your mind, which is against the commandment. So you have to understand what is playing against you, even in your thoughts, when you're thinking about somebody else and it's not according to the law. Like it, it gets it gets very it gets very deep. But we're supposed to do all things without murmurings and disputings, because that'll actually make us a better servant. And that's the goal here. We're supposed to be servants. Not lifting ourselves up against one another. Not lifting ourselves up in our own mind. But we're literally working on going down, not up. This is the calling. This is what we're here for. You ready, Casa? You got something else? No, that's good. Okay, let's keep moving. Verse and what is the goal? What is the goal? Let's get it. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of Allah Hayyam, without rebuke. In without the midst, rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. So if we do these things, we're going to be without rebuke. Not that we're going to be without rebuke as what is the standard of the world. Because you can never be perfect in the sight of men. But we can be perfect in the sight of Allah Hayyam. So we can be without rebuke in the sight of Allah Hayyam because there's a law. There's fruits of the spirit. There's a guideline. There's There's a standard. But for men... You can never be perfect. You can never be without rebuke because they can find anything according to their own heart or their own mind as to rebuke you for. So for us, we have to be of the mind of Yahche. We have to walk according to the law. We have to have the standard of the law, the standard of the fruits of the spirit. And if we have those, that puts us without rebuke to Allah Hayyam, and without rebuke to our brothers and sisters in Yache. And what does that do? It allows us, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, we may shine as lights in the world. Because Allah Hayyam's law is spiritual. The world, the laws of the world are carnal. We have to choose the spiritual and be obedient unto it unto death. Let's keep going, Brother Costa. Philippians 2 and 16. Holding forth the word of life. There we go. So we're supposed to be holding forth the word of life, which is the, the law and the fruits of the spirit. We're supposed to be holding those things and Yache, because his name, he's the word. So we hold those things and holding upon them, right? Which means to retain. We're supposed to retain these things. To detain. That means like to lock it up so it can't move. <laughs> that spirit ain't going nowhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> to pay attention to. We're supposed to be paying attention to ourselves. To give, take, heed unto, to hold forth, to mark or to stay. Like it needs to be, it needs to go into the ground. And stay right there. So it don't move. 
when we talk about standing on the rock of Yache, this is what we're talking about. Holding fast, retaining, detaining the law, detaining the fruits of the spirit, holding fast to those things, holding fast to Yache, that we can't be moved any other way from off our rock. Let's continue, Brother Cousin. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice in me. So we're supposed to be rejoicing in one another when we see one another do well. Yo, I see you doing better. I see you doing well. Like we're supposed to be rejoicing in one another's accomplishments in our walks and in our faith. Not looking for the negative. looking, trying to see the fault in our brother or sister. This is the heart and the mind that we're supposed to be walking in and we're supposed to be keeping and retaining so that we may be found worthy being obedient unto death in these good things and focusing on our own work trying to get our salvation with fear and trembling. Holding forth to the word of life so that we can reach salvation. Praise our higher today. I think this is a great start for where we're going. Really perfecting the heart, perfecting the mind, teaching us how to to walk with one another in Yache so that we'll be without rebuke in the world. And it takes everyone, it takes everyone to be of this mind and of this heart because if we don't move as a body, then how is it the body of Yache? How is it the body of Christ? Yache didn't move by himself. Even when he came to the earth, he had his disciples with him. They were moving as a body. And we're not greater than our master. So we have to move as a body. Everybody has to be strengthened. Everybody has to be made whole so that we can all walk in agreement with one another and striving for the same goal in Yache as one another. There's no first places in this walk. You're not gonna get a special prize for getting there first. Especially if you had to climb up on the backs of others and put others down to get there, then you missed the whole journey in itself. This is the calling. Especially in the body and fellowshipping. This is the calling. And I pray that this mind may stay in us and that we may keep it. We may keep Allah first in our hearts and our minds where nothing else can come before it. Because as soon as we allow something to come before this, then we can be sidetracked. We can be deceived. But if the law and the fruits of spirit in Yache is first in our hearts and our mind always, we're always going to resort back to what we know and keep what we know 
But if there's another way, you're going to fall. There can't be another way. You have to commit and be obedient unto death. And that's the only way for this walk. Praise Allah. I am my, um, Costa, you got anything? Um, I just sent you some precepts to see if you want to touch on case. Okay, it was supposed to have joy, joy one for another. And I think that. let me let you look and see to touch on what takes away from the joy in this walk, the spirits that are at work behind it. Go ahead, brother, if it's going to help. Just like okay. I said, man, you get the opportunity to help your brother, help him. Well, okay. So we came on early on about vainglory, seeking how we can do better for others, not seeking to be above, exalted, or pushing others down. And then we came to the end where it talked about it should be a joy for everybody, joy in watching each other grow, joy in the growth in us, because we know it's Allah Hayyam's will to do and to prosper us. That leads to understanding if we're in this walk and we don't have joy, if we're in this walk and we find we're losing joy, we don't have joy, it's spirits at work. And just to catch what they are, for one, to get down about if I'm looking at somebody else and I'm not where they are and vexation comes, I get upset or I get worried or I get anxious about where I am or I get in some feeling looking upon them. The spirit of anger came in a fit of angry temper, bitterness has come upon me. And let's see what angry temper does. In Dan chapter 2, verse 4, For the spirit of anger encompasseth him with a net of deceit, and blindeth his eyes, and through lying darkeneth his mind, and giveth him his own peculiar vision. So once I get in my feelings, compare myself with somebody else, or being hard on myself, I can't see straight. So I'm starting to go downward. The joy is fading away. And wherewith encompasseth it his eyes. What does anger use to encompass my eyes? With hatred of heart, so as to be envious of his brother. Hatred. Anger uses the spirit of hatred to lead me to envy. To where now I'm comparing myself with somebody else. I'm looking at what they're doing and I'm not having joy. When I see them prosper... I'm going to take it the wrong way. I'm not going to be happy for them. I'm going to be upset for myself. Oh, I'm going to be jealous of them. And Gad explains these things. In Gad chapter 4, it said, For hatred worketh with envy. So we have two witnesses of these things. For hatred worketh with envy also against them that prosper. So you can see when comparing ourselves to another or getting in our feelings about where we are when we see another doing better in a certain area or all together, hatred is working with envy to hate them that prosper. So long as it heareth or seeth of their success, it always languisheth. So scripturally, we have understanding of the spirits at work if we're getting down and not enjoy because of where someone else is, or we can be hateful and envious of our own self, not giving ourselves, having that patience and that comfort of love and that um, that bowels of mercy toward ourselves to give ourselves the opportunity to grow. Because we may think- Yeah, that's what pride we, comes into. You hit it. We may think oh, we should be like this right now. I should be better than this. This is where I should be. And now we're doing it to ourselves because these spirits don't care. And they'll take, take your hand off of the plow. Yes, sir. It goes on to say in Gad chapter 3, And now, my children, hearken to the words of truth to work righteousness. That focus on ourselves, being obedient unto death, holding forth the word of life. He said, hearken to the words of truth and work righteousness and all the law of the Most High. That law being that standard, <laughs> that, that mm -hmm. very was holding us up in the sight of Allah Hayyam. And go not astray through the spirit of hatred, for it is evil in all the doings of men. And whatsoever a man doeth, the hater abominateth. That's where in this um, 
what is wicked and perverse nation in the world. Unfortunately, the spirit of hatred is in the world, so we are not going to be perfect in the sight of men, as Paul had taught, and Zach, what you were talking about. But in the sight of Allah, I am, we can do it. And though a man worketh the law of the Lord, he praiseth him not. So now we know what spirit's at work. If we see a brother prospering or sister prospering and we're not praising them for it, we know what spirit's pushing us not to do so. And though a man feareth the Lord and taketh pleasure in that which is righteous, he loveth him not. He dispraiseth the truth. So that's that disputing, not happy about the truth because the truth is in the law. He envieth him that prospereth. He welcometh evil speaking, that evil thought that can come about a brother, or sister, or where they may be. His imagination. Hatred. Right. His hatred at work. He welcometh evil speaketh. He loveth arrogance. You remember we talked about fornication, teacheth arrogance. Now you know hatred is working with fornication to get us arrogant, thinking we're better, or exalting ourselves. For hatred blindeth his soul, as I also then looked on Joseph. Mm -hmm. Anger blinds the mind with the net of deceit. Hatred blinds the soul. Fornication, those pleasures darken the mind. You can see how these spirits, it clouds us to where we can attain to what we're actually seeking after. We can't see. The light we can't focus. Right. We can't look forward to continue plowing the direction to Oyache. Now he gave a good solution. For if a man, chapter seven, for if a man prospereth more than you, do not be vexed. Do not get anxious. Do not get worried. Do not get down. What should we do? But pray oh, all you're plowing, baby. <laughs> 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 but pray also for him that's the joyous thing to do pray right. also for him that he may have perfect prosperity mm -hmm. my brother's doing good i want to see him perfect that thing keep going that's love right let yachi continue building what's that love in your heart yes, right. uh. yeah you're like yo like i want i want to see you do well you know, and I'm going to do well, too, because I'm going to focus on myself and I'm going to put in the work. I'm not getting down about it. Like, oh, he's doing well. Ain't no way I'm going to catch up to them. Yeah. Like, you get into that, then you're not focused on yourself. And that's where it, you fall in. You get cloudy. Well, it is expedient for you. And if he be further exalted, be not envious of him. Remember that all flesh shall die and offer praise to Allah Hayyim, who giveth things good and profitable to all men. And lastly, seek out the judgments of the Lord and thy mind will rest and be at peace. That's the plow. I jumped too early, huh? It's all good. We ended up right back there. Seek thy salvation with fear and trembling. All right, so that help us to understand what's at work. Amen. I think that's good. Anybody got any questions? That is the standard for us here at Hebrew Readers Church. That's the standard, you know, when dealing with anyone or dealing with one of us. You know, we have to keep that mind, especially dealing with us, but even dealing with other people outside of the faith. We have to have that mind in us because so we can be without rebuke in the world. So we have to walk in this always. Uh, if, if you don't have a question, just write no in the chat. If you do have a question, uh, write yes, and we'll, so we can wait for you to type it. I have, I have a question. 
Could you please explain what is wrong with a person who says they are in this truth, but they sow discord? In Philippians 2 and verse 3, it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. So if a person is sowing discord, then they're sowing strife. It may be one thing. It may be a personal struggle for the person. And it may be something that at some point you may be able to help them with. I don't know the specific individual to know if they're putting their hand to the plow and actually working on these things themselves or they're just giving over to the lust of it. Um, I can't speak specifically. I would pray that it would be the first one being in optimism. But um, yeah, it can be a number of things, to be honest with you. You got anything on that, cuz? Um, we the the concept of being in this truth. There's um not everyone is aware of what the truth is to know that what it is to actually be in. So there's also that factor that they could just not be fully aware of what the gospel is calling for at this time to know. And Ephesians 5 and 9 said, the fruits of the spirit is in all righteousness, goodness, and truth. So could be something to build. And as Zachwa touched on, send that example. Send that example ourselves. And maybe if you're around the person, we have to know the details. Can't speak specifically, Zach, was right. Don't know exactly what's going on. But it's an opportunity to do all things in truth ourselves, no matter what they're doing. Yeah, it could be an example. That's always the option. Put your hand to the plow and keep plowing. See, because if you're worried about them and their and their ill dealings, then that means that you're not focused on your own plowing as well. But as we said in the lesson, you know, you got to focus on your plowing and focus. If other people got things going on and it's not something that you need to deal with, Continue plowing. And when Allah guides you or whatever the case is, or if there's an opportunity to do good and it comes up and you can bring it before them or allow them to see it or to help them, or they may come to you and ask you a question, you just never know how it's going to play out. But you got to stay focused on your own plowing and working on yourself. I think we go on questions. Uh, I want to say the Lord's Prayer and we end this recording. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Would you like to pray? Sure, I'll pray. Thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Omen, omen, omen. out to Ohio. <laughs>